and I'm back and in business again at chapter 18, verse 12, the book of Second Chronicles. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let your word, therefore, I pray you, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. <laughs> Notes. Uh, the times have changed. The demand has not. The apostate church is still... It's basically saying the same thing. Speak thou good. As Israel of old could not tolerate the truth, the modern church cannot tolerate the truth either. Things are bad and getting worse, but yet, oh, prosperity, prosperity. What an absolute joke. Verse 13. And Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, even what my God says, that will I speak. Notes. Now what determination we have here to speak only what truth uh, the, thus saith the Lord. And he would earn him continued imprisonment, the bread and water of affliction, and without Jehoshaphat lifting a hand to help him. What sad irony that is. Verse 14. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. Notes. Now, Micaiah begins by answering a fool according to his folly. He answers in sarcasm, which is easily obvious, of course. Verse 15. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure you that you say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Note. Well, the fact really actually is, is that Ahab did not want any of the truth. He'd rather listen to a bunch of nonsense that speaks good and uh, looking forward to good things when the fact of the matter is nothing good was coming their way. Verse 16. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains, as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return therefore every man to his house in peace. Uh, notes. Now, this word from God must have hit like a bombshell in the ears of Mr. Ahab. Verse 17. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Notes. Well, unfortunately, there are many false prophets presently who are ready and willing to prophesy all the good things that are going to happen, irrespective of what the truth actually is. Verse 18. Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Notes. What we're getting right here is a very rare glimpse and one of the most astounding pictures of the throne of God and the manner in which heavenly business is actually conducted. A very, very rare look into the actual spirit world. Verse 19. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spoke, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Notes. Now what we have here is very, very interesting. Now if Ahab had repented, this scene would not have taken place. But despite the warning of God, he will carry out his own self-will, and it would end in his doom. Verse 20. Then there came out a spirit, an evil spirit, mind you, and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? Notes. Now we learn from this and from actual Job chapters 1 and 2 that Satan, along with evil spirits, presently have limited access to the throne of God at certain times. There will come a time and shortly when all such will be cast out of heaven and allowed no more entrance. Revelation chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. In fact, just exactly why the Lord has allowed Satan and demon spirits such access is a bit of a mystery. But it's not because they're friends. Romans chap or, uh, Revelation chapter 10, verse uh, 7, if I'm not mistaken. And I almost was. Verse 21. 
And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall entice him, and you shall also prevail. Go out and do even so. Note. Well, this is talking about Ahab's prophets. Lying spirits still have access to the mouths of false prophets, even into this very hour. But the idea is, if men will not have truth, the Lord will aid and even abet their believing a lie. Uh, Ahab wasn't even going to change anyway, so it just compounded his problems. Verse 22, Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these your prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil against you. Note, now once again, we have a prophet that's saying, God is the one who's really behind all of these bad things that are going on. Repent, Ahab. But well, we also learn from this that God controls not only the heavenly host of the righteous, but also the spirits of darkness. Satan can only do what God allows him to do. The story of Job documents that very, very thoroughly. Verse 23. Then Zedekiah the son of Shaniah came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto you? Notes. Now, Jehoshaphat is watching all this, and yet he did not lift a hand to help the prophet of God. Well, Judah would pay very, very dearly for Jehoshaphat's ignorance and stupidity right here. Verse 24. And Micaiah said, Behold, you shall see on that day when you shall go into an inner chamber to hide yourself. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son. And say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with the water of affliction until I return in peace. Notes. Now as stated... Jehoshaphat didn't lift a single hand to help this man. Verse 27. And Micaiah said, If you certainly return in peace, then has not the Lord spoken by me? And he said, Hearken all the people. Notes. Before Micaiah was led away to prison, he turned to all the people who were present who had heard God's uh, pronouncement, and he warned them. Well, sadly, they did not hearken, and Ahab was killed. Verse 28. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth-Gilead. Notes. Now, Jehoshaphat was being foolish, especially in the face of this prophecy, to accompany Ahab, seeing that destruction was placed upon him. Uh, getting next to someone like that is probably not... The, uh, a bright decision. Verse 29. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself, and I will go to the battle, but you put on your robes, your kingly robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and went into the battle. Notes. Oh, this is really kind of dumb. If men spend as much try uh, time trying to please God as they do trying to outwit God, how much better they would actually be. Very, very poorly constructed plan here. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. Note. Now the Lord had put it in the mind of the king of Syria to actually seek only Ahab. So we have a little problem here. Got Jehoshaphat all dressed up in a different manner. Verse 31, And it came to pass when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat that they said, It is the king of Israel. Well, because of the kingly robes. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God moved them to depart from him. Notes. Oh, otherwise he would have been killed, no doubt about it. Only by the mercy and grace of God was he spared. He had no business being there in the first place. We'll have to pick up in chapter 18, verse 32 of Second Chronicles. Thank you, and God bless.